Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Scott and this is Inza. If you haven't seen our last video, uh, we are converting this 2018 Ford Transit into a tiny home. Uh, this is video one of our build series. And we saw a lot of inspiration for this van build on YouTube. So we thought we wanted to come back to give back to this community. And so we're going to share our van build with you guys. Uh, by far, we have no experts here. We are doing this for the first time. So if you guys have any recommendations, if you, you know, do this as a job uh, we're always happy for some recommendations leave them in the comments um, but before we can start it we should clean out our van so let's yes. go do that let's do that So now that the van's all cleaned up, <laughs> Scott's going to show you how we did not drill any holes in our van. Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about plus nuts, or cross nuts as they're called. So I got this idea from Antoine from Far Out Ride uh, at faroutride.com. And uh, what it is basically is a bolt that you insert into the wall and then when you tighten it, these joints expand and it traps the wall in between it so you can screw things into the into the cross nut without having to put holes in your wall. So it was a big deal for us because we just bought a new van, we don't really want to drill holes in the wall. It helps prevent corrosion and it's actually stronger than screws, right? So so we went through and what we're doing right now is, is we're installing them by taking a hammer and uh, finding a hole in the wall where we think we're going to need a joint. Uh, so over here and we just insert the, the bolt into the hole, but it doesn't go all the way because of these ribbed joints for the cross nut. So what we have to do is we have to hold it in place. I'm just using a wrench to do that. And then you just bang it in, like, just like that, right? You gotta hit it hard, because we're working with steel walls here. And if you just slightly tap it, afraid of hurting the walls or hurting the, the cross joint, the cross nut, it's, uh, it's not gonna go in. So I'm just going to do that a couple more times here, and um, we're actually going to put a stud right here for the wall, a piece of flashing. And uh, that, that, that hole is big enough actually, so that's awesome, that happens every once in a while. But, uh, but this one down here is not, right? So I'm going to hold it in place with the wrench again, and just once again, just hit that with the hammer. Just like that. <laughs> the one above it popped out, but that's alright because uh, it was too big. So now that we have hammered all of these plus nuts in to the wall, we're going to go through, go ahead and tighten them. So to do that, because I don't have a, this version of a riveter, what I'm going to do is I bought myself some 1 4th 20 by 3 inch uh, machine screws and nuts to go on them. And how we're going to do this is we're going to tighten the nut onto the screw about halfway put any size wrench that's smaller than the nut on the end and that's just gonna allow you to get closer up to the wall then we go and we uh, we insert the screw into the joint and we start rotating it with our fingers and once it gets good and in there you can reach out behind it and kind of feel it coming through so I'm just gonna push that in there for a second keep screwing it perfect now it's sticking out on the other end about half an inch almost an inch, you can go as tight or as, not, or as loose as, as you want back there, you just want to make sure it's all the way through. What I'm then going to do is push this wrench up against the wall and tighten the bolt almost all the way with my finger. And you get a pair of vice grips. So these are these uh, allow me to clamp on to the, to the screw and uh, in such a way that it's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock those in place. And then I hold this wrench and the vice grips with one hand and with the other hand I'm going to go up and over and start tightening this nut. So after about eight hours of manually wrenching 
every single one of these things in. We had finished the walls and we were about to start on the ceiling. Uh, my dad had a great idea to, uh, to use power tools because, you know, they make the job a lot easier. So he recommended that we put a bit on the end that can <clears throat> handle a hex screw and then buy bolts that had a hex bolt Put that bolt in like we were with the other ones, use a wrench as the torque just like we did before, but instead of having to hold the vice grip and one uh, wrench with this hand while we tightened with the other hand, we could just drill in directly through the circle on the end of the wrench. That would effectively tighten the bolts and honestly saved us like 10 minutes per bolt. So, wish we would have learned that earlier, but at least we got to do the whole ceiling like that and finished in like 20 minutes. So after we finished installing our plus nuts yesterday, we decided to tackle the floors. So we did the floors in three parts. The first part we did half inch foam board insulation of a 15 PSI pressure. Then at the second layer we did three quarter inch foam board insulation uh, that had an R rating of five and that PSI rating was 25. Uh, we got that because the human footprint PSI rating is 16, so it would be durable and strong enough for us to walk on and use as a base layer for our floors. Uh, and then on the top, we did just plywood three quarter inch. So for the first layer, we had to cut out individually each gap in between the ribs and the van and place that in the floors almost like slats. The second, we just uh, took a board in um, and then cut it out for the wheel wells and cut out the dimensions of the van. We used three foam boards for that and then we just laid those over three sheets of plywood and traced the outline with a Sharpie uh, and then cut the plywood to make it a lot easier to fit. Um, and that was how we did our floors. We glued it together <laughs> after, after we laid each layer down, right? And then after we finished gluing everything together, we sprayed great stuff in along the corners and in between the gaps in the doors. And now we officially have a floor. And this is the end of our first build video. I hope you guys liked it. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment below, and we're going to see you in our next video. See ya.